Exodus chapter 14, verse 5. If you're ready, would you shout at your boy, I'm ready. ready. Everybody online, put in the room, I'm ready. Exodus chapter 14, verse 5. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? Please don't miss this, y'all. What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. I don't want you to miss. He changed their mind because he recognized if I lose them, I also lose a service. Okay, don't miss that. Now, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Somebody said, that's a whole word right there. That, that's a word. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. This is Jesus. He's having a conversation with his disciples because they were just arguing about who is the greatest in the kingdom. So Jesus sets them straight. He says, listen, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Culture trips about certain types of greatness, but I don't want that to be your focus. In the kingdom, greatness is serving. Then verse 26, it says, Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great. Somebody say great. Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. I don't want us to miss this, guys. I don't want us to miss this. Pharaoh started to think about it. After he let them go, Pharaoh started to think to himself. He said, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, what's up, bruh? And then he said, you know what? We have not only just lost the Israelites, but we also, please look, we lost their service. I want us to get this because the Pharaoh type of heart is an individual where they're like, you know what? I don't really care that I lost the friendship. I don't really care that I lost a bond. I don't really care that I lost her. I don't really care that I lost them. I don't even really value that person. The only thing I value from that person is the service I can get from that person. Y'all not talking to me. I'm not pursuing them because I value their person. I'm pursuing them because I value the service that I can get from that person. Y'all hearing this? I only value what I could get from them because these type of heart types, the Pharaoh type of heart, I don't view people as a person. I view that person as a purse. I'm coming out quick, y'all. I don't just view them as a person. I view them as a purse. I want their services. I really don't care and I really don't value you adding stuff to me and me adding stuff to you truth be told all i give you is subtraction and you give to me addition and i'm cool with that because all i value is your service somebody say service this is not a transactional type of relationship where we have withdrawals and deposit it's me just taking withdrawals from you and I'm labeling that my deposit. I have a type of heart where you live bankrupt hanging with me. Somebody say service. He says, what have we done? We, we have lost the Israelites and their service. Let me go ahead and come for somebody's edges real quick. Maybe this is the reason why they start calling you again after you haven't heard from them in months. It's not that they really want you. They just want, y'all don't want to talk to me, your service. Now, there's some services they shouldn't get to marriage anyway. We're going to talk about that in Cuffin Season 2.0. But the reason they're back in your inbox, the reason they're back in your DMs, y'all not talking to me, the reason they have started leaving you emails and you haven't heard from them in weeks, could it be because this is a Pharaoh type heart? I just want 
they service. Maybe this is the reason they start calling again and I haven't heard from them in a year. I'm like, we're in a whole pandemic. I'm like, Chris Tucker, Rush Hour, we're in a whole pandemic. And I haven't heard from you at all. You haven't checked to see if I caught COVID, if I got furloughed, if I got laid off. You don't know that I lost my mother. You don't know that I lost my father. But the first conversation that we have again is about what you can get from me. They don't value the person. They just value the service. Maybe this is why that individual popped back up after going ghost for several months. I'm preaching, y'all. And first, let me not get ahead of myself. Let me break down what it means to go ghost. For somebody to go ghost, this is a sudden switch in behavior and or pattern without explanation. And their attempt to reach back out to you has gone unanswered for days, weeks, months, and even years. The reason I had to break that down, because I'll never forget, I was having this roundtable discussion, and this one lady was like, listen, I didn't go ghost on you. I just needed two months of a break. I just needed a break for two months. And I'm like, but you didn't tell him, though. I didn't ghost him. Okay, when you ghost somebody, it means there is a sudden switch of behavior and or pattern without explanation and their attempt to reach back out to you to continue that pattern that y'all have had for X amount of time has gone unanswered for days, weeks, months, and even years. This is when you've been ghosted. I feel this, y'all. For anybody who has been ghosted and you feel emotionally stranded due to it, for anybody who's listening to this message or watching online, you are low-key mentally losing it because of somebody else's immaturity or because of somebody else's poor communication skills. What I'm about to say may sting, but it's the truth. They only wanted your services, not the server. It got quiet. See, we got one clap. Everybody online, we got one clap. One. They did not want... The server, they just wanted the services. Jesus knew that these type of people existed because in John chapter 6, verse 26, you can put this on the screen, you don't have to go there. In John chapter 6, verse 26, Jesus was talking to a group of people and he was like, listen, y'all are only following me. Y'all do not follow me for the miraculous. The only reason y'all are here are because of the loaves and because of the field. The only reason you came here is because last time I was preaching, y'all got some fish and chips. That's the only reason y'all are here, because y'all got a little bread. But you don't want me. You don't want my person. You don't want my word. You don't want my doctrine. You don't want my principles. You only want my hand. And I wonder how many Christians still today, we don't want God's heart. We want God's Hand. Can I get somebody to say services? I want to help somebody who has a endless mental loop that has been going on in your head, which has handed you insomnia. Pharaoh hearted men and Pharaoh hearted women. And this doesn't even have to be relational. Pharaoh hearted employers. Pharaoh hearted parents. Lord have mercy. Pharaoh-hearted pastors, Pharaoh-hearted churches, they don't care about the people, they just want the crowds. They just want the crowds, which is why COVID has hit a lot of pastors so much, because it exposed, I really don't love people, I just love crowds. I've been building campuses, I've been building buildings, but I have not been building people. Don't love, don't love people. They only love crowds. These type of individuals only have a Pharaoh type heart. But Jesus says, listen, it's different in the kingdom. Foundational text, verse 28. Jesus says, I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve. Listen, I want you to look at the massive difference between a Pharaoh heart and a kingdom heart. The Pharaoh heart, we lost them and we lost their services. The kingdom heart, I don't even want your services. I'm not here to be served. I'm here to serve you. Can I get somebody to say service? 
In the kingdom, the word servant means minister. When you are a servant, you are a minister. And I think the reason some people are so disgusted with the term servant is because nobody likes serving a person when it looks like you won't lift up a hand and everything I'm doing is for your benefit, but you're not helping me at all. <sighs> nobody likes serving and they feel underappreciated. Servant means minister. In the kingdom, ministers serve. In culture, they don't want ministers. They just want many stars. That's all they want. Somebody caught that. That, that. That's all they want. I only want a bigger platform to serve my ego. It's not about serving people. I only want more followers where I could appear to be important. It's not about souls. I only am doing this business thing in the community where I could post it on the gram and look like I care. God knows the heart, y'all. He knows the heart and he knows the motive, and I'm trying to get us to understand, when it's kingdom, you don't have to keep refreshing your social media to see if they updated their status, but they're not calling you back. Somebody said facts. I like that. We need to say amen, facts. Can I get us to say amen, facts? <laughs> When it's kingdom, you don't have to keep refreshing your social media to see if they updated their status, but they haven't returned your call. Not when it's kingdom. When it's kingdom, you won't have to stalk them because when your kingdom favor stalks you. That should hit somebody. When you kingdom and have surrendered to God and are obeying him in all of your ways and striving to please God, favor will stalk you and opportunities will stalk you and promotion will stalk you and upgrades will stalk you. You don't have to stalk anybody. Just be kingdom. Can I get somebody to say, just be kingdom? And for the love of God, if they block you, please don't create another social media page where you can spy on them. Listen, y'all, it may be comical to some people, but we do it. When you spend so much time monitoring them, you risk losing you. Losing you, and instead of you serving the purpose that God has intended for you to service, your esteem is attached to somebody else's follow. And when you don't understand this, that in the kingdom, greatness is serving, you risk returning back to try to fix something or someone who was really breaking you. Pharaoh said, what have we done? We've lost them and we have lost their services. What in your life keeps trying to claim you back because it lost your service? What website is trying to claim you back because it lost your service. The service that you used to give it every night at two in the morning when your flesh was on fire. What website is trying to claim you back because it lost your service? What joint is trying to claim you back because it lost your service? What drink is trying to claim you back? What historical mindset is trying to claim you back? What sexual immoral behavior is trying to claim you back because it has lost your service? Because whenever God is calling you forward, the enemy will always try to bring back something of former. I know I'm telling the truth, y'all. I know I'm telling the truth. Every single time God calls you, but here's the beauty, y'all. When you understand that you're called, you now can live like an answer. When you understand that you're called, you now can live like an answer. But every time you're about to enter into a new season, something from an old season always shows up on its Adele saying, hello. <laughs> Am I preaching, y'all? Every time I've noticed it's hell strategy. Whenever you're about to experience something foreign, he always puts some familiar comfort in the door of a foreign pathway. I want to see, did your feet move but your heart remained? I want to see, did your location change but your taste buds didn't? 
That's your appetite. I want to see will you really choose destiny over your history? Will you choose familiar or will you choose foreign? Will you choose the birth canal or will you choose a womb that you have outgrown? So now God has to make you uncomfortable by inducing you in this season. I want to know. Preach Holy Ghost. I want you to know that you have been called. When you recognize that you're called, you will live like an answer. And that is the whole purpose of this Kingdom Vibes Only series. That's the whole purpose of me standing before you week after week, sweating out my clothes, because I want us to understand that you're called to be kingdom. You're called to live by a different ethic. You're called to live by a different code. You're called to live by different principles. You live for one before many. I want you to recognize that you're an ambassador. I want you to recognize that you're a world changer. I want you to recognize that you're a heaven's billboard. Why are you crying over them? If they don't like you, God must have better. If they don't accept you, God must have better. I'm not tripping over anything in the marketplace because I'm kingdom. Can I get somebody to say I'm kingdom? When our past calls us, we don't even send it to voicemail. <laughs> when your past calls you, it should get this message. I'm sorry. The person that you reached is now out of service. Please hang up and don't call again. <laughs> don't call again. What would happen if we were a people who are out of service to hell's schemes? Out of service to hell's games, out of service to hell's plans, out of service to hell's plots, out of service to hell's addictions, out of service to hell's distractions, out of service to hell's counterfeits. What would happen if we got so focused on the kingdom while well, I'm out of service to anything that is not kingdom? Can I get somebody online and everybody in the sacred sanctuary say, I'm out of service to you? I'm out of service to you. Pharaoh said, We lost them and we lost their services but Jesus says in verse 28 of Matthew 20 he says listen I, I didn't come to be served Th that's, that's not what I came to do but I came to serve to give my life as a ransom for many. So I want us to watch this. Jesus redefines what greatness is in the kingdom. What culture thinks is greatness is status and influence. And in the kingdom, greatness is surrender and service. You want to be kingdom vibes only? To be great in my kingdom is for you to serve. Now, I want to break some things down, get to some points, and then get back to where we left off last week, and then I'm going to get out of your way. I want us to understand that kingdom greatness is not tied to what culture labels as the goat. If you don't know what it means, the goat, when the culture says Muhammad Ali was the goat, Michael Jordan was the goat, Kobe Bryant was the goat. That means the greatest of all time. Whatever culture labels as greatness due to somebody's athleticism is not what the kingdom calls greatness. Kingdom greatness does not mean you have more prosperity. Because I know we think that. We think more means more God. Let me mess somebody up. More does not mean more God and less does not mean less God. Some of the best pastors who love people you have never heard of. Never heard of them. And I don't know if you will. You may if God breathes on them and this is what he desires for their life. But they are killing it with about 80 or 100 members faithfully serving. I mean, this brother, this, this, this man of God, this woman of God is just killing it every single week and serving. They have less, but they have more God. And there are some churches that are mainstream. If I were to call out names, you know their name. They have more, but that does not mean more God. Because infection swells too. Whew. Just because it's growing doesn't mean God is in it. So we have to be careful instead of saying, oh, they're blessed because they got. Listen, more does not mean more God. And less does not mean less God. In the kingdom, greatness is not tied to how well-known you are. 
You know what well-known is to me? God knowing my name. For real. At the end of the day, there is nobody in this sanctuary and nobody watching online who could ever say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Period. Being well-known is God knowing my name. And watch this. If the only way you could hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, must mean you must faithfully be good at serving somewhere. Did you catch that? Well done, my good and faithful servant. What makes you think you're going to hear that if there is no good place you're serving at and being faithful with? I'm trying to teach, girl. I'm trying. Greatness is not tied to being well-known. The culture has a view of success that the kingdom does not have as a view of success. Usually everything culture is the antithesis of what kingdom is. And everything kingdom is the antithesis of what culture is. So I need us to understand this scripture I'm probably going to say for the rest of my life. I say it so much, but I want to give you Bible. I want to give this to your attention. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It's one of my favorite passages of scripture that many people have never heard of. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 10. It says, I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. So in the kingdom, success is when you are occupying your God-given task. That's success. So watch this. Look, if your assignment for this season is for you to be occupied with healing, like God is like, listen, what happened in childhood, what happened that, from that divorce, what happened in that breakup? My assignment for this season of your life is for you to be occupied with getting healed. If you are doing everything you know how to do to become healed in the kingdom, God calls that success. God, this redefines everything, y'all. That, that's what success is. That's kingdom. If, if what God's assignment for you right now is for you to give him your morning, because you got your prayer time. But it's at night, and you always end up falling asleep. Ever have anybody? Anybody honest enough? Like you pray and just, God, I thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for your grace and mercy. God, you're awesome. You're wonderful. God, God, and God's like, listen, okay, I want our devotion time. I want it to be your first fruit, not your leftover strength. Because every time you start talking to me at night, that's your leftover energy. Consecrate the morning to me. Before you even depart from the house, before you grab your phone and see whoever posted or whoever's live on Facebook, get in my book. How about in the morning, let that be your devotion time. Everybody's different. Some people work at night, so everybody's schedule's different. But if that's what God has given you for your assignment in this season, and you are occupied with it, the kingdom calls that. Success. It redefines what success is. I think failure is succeeding the most in what matters the least. That's what failure is. If God's assignment for you right now is I want you to be focused and occupied enhancing your photography skills. I want you to be intentional with getting voice lessons for your gift. I want you to beat your craft because you don't know an opportunity is going to come your way in two months. And I told you in my word, be ready in season and out of season. The only reason I would tell you to be ready in season and out of season is there must be something that's going to happen in a season you think it shouldn't, but it is. So beat your craft now. Because when opportunity calls, only the prepared can answer. Preach, Holy Spirit. I had no idea in 2018, my brother Torrance is in the back telling you, could tell you the truth. I was up in this sanctuary by myself, sweating just like this, preaching to a camera, practicing, 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 perfecting. I had no idea a pandemic was coming in two years. I had no idea all of 2020, this is how I would be preaching. What's up, everybody? Anytime I come on clapping, anytime, I had no idea that God was preparing me two years out. 
And God is telling you, prepare. I'm talking to somebody. I feel it. Prepare. Prepare. Get your finances in order. Stop eating out. You eating your paycheck. Stop doing that. Get your house in order. Create the YouTube channel. Get the podcast. Prepare. 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 And there's something. How you know it's God's when it doesn't go away? Like you dating this dude and you hear him, break up, break up, break up, break up, break up, break up. It's about to get cold outside. Break up, break up, break up, break up, break up. And it goes both ways. You marry. And God just keep apologize, apologize, apologize. Be softer, be softer. No, this doesn't mean divorce. This doesn't mean divorce. Work through it. Patience is the ability to survive the season of not yet. Woo! Patience is the ability to survive the season of not yet. So just because it's hard, we preach in the discernment series, hard doesn't mean quit. Forgive and try again. Forgive and try again. When it's God, he it doesn't stop. When it's flesh, after you commit the sin, it goes quiet. <laughs> you ever notice that? You should go over the house, bro. Bro, she don't want, she look, look, she lied for, she with it. And you go over there and you do whatever you do. And after you walk out, you're like, man, you stupid. It's funny how the enemy will always get us to salivate over that which will eliminate. Somebody say kingdom. I had to let it just say la for a moment. I want us to notice that there is a massive difference in how Pharaoh said their services is what I miss. And how Jesus said, I'm not looking to be served but I'm looking to serve. And this is the kingdom key that God wants us to execute in our own life. Because hear me, y'all. Knowing what you're supposed to be occupied with causes for you to experience peace. Somebody right now, you know why you don't have any peace? Because you're not occupied with your God-given task, you're occupied with everything else. What your mama said, what your friend said, what CNN said, that kept you up all night. What your bank account numbers are showing, you can't even sleep because of your bank account. You forgot that Jesus said, look to the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, but yet your heavenly Father provides for them. How much more valuable are you than they? Look at, the, look at the wheat of the field. I tell you that the way that I have dressed these wheats, Solomon's temple wasn't even dressed like this. And next time you worry and find yourself a bird. <laughs> we forgot. Because when you know where your oil is, that's a gift to your future self. Preach Holy Spirit. When you know what you have oil for. That's a gift to your destiny. Now, here's the problem. Many times we confuse destiny with urges. I'm just feeling this. I just, I just really feel it. I just feel like this is what I should do. I just feel like God's calling me. It, there's a difference between your destiny and an urge. Urges comes from the word urgent. It is a haste, swift motion to carry out a fleshly desire. That's urge. It's always haste. Whenever it's an urge, it's quick. Real fast. You got to hurry up and buy this. You got to hurry up and buy this. There was something I saw. I was going to wait and share this for the cuffing season 2.0 series. But I remember when I was getting my wife, when we were getting a car, I walked up to the lot. And the guy said, hey, man, uh, you know what you're looking for? I said, yeah, I'm looking for this type of car. I want this type of year, and I want these type of conditions. He said, well, I can't sell you nothing. <laughs> I said, what you mean? He said, oh, I'm just kidding, but when, when a client comes on the lot and they already know what they want, it's hard for me to make a sale because they won't listen to the other options. There's something that we want to sell, and if you already know what you want, go ahead and talk to this department because I really can't convince you to do other things. I said, man, what if we already knew our assignment? When the enemy tries to offer us another, other things, you're like, no, I want peace. I want joy. I want clarity. I don't want drama. I don't have to duck from stuff in my house. I want to know he going to come home, though. I want to know that she going to come home. I want to know she never going to grab a knife on me. I want to know I never have to sleep like this at night because I don't know what she going to do. I want to be able to know that I trust him and she trusts me. I don't care if they go through my phone. How can we touch all on each other's bodies, but we can't touch each other's phone? I don't want to worry about that. So when the enemy tries to offer you something different, you won't buy it because you already know what you want. And you know what I want? 
kingdom. Can I get somebody to say kingdom? kingdom. Urges, haste. Your destiny is your inward GPS that directs you towards your God-given task. That's your destiny. It's your, it's your internal GPS. It's always been there. It's just we keep driving our life versus letting the Holy Spirit drive our life. If you look back on your life, there's always been something that either irritated you or you are passionate about. That is your internal GPS pointing you to your God-given assignment. I'm living this, y'all. I was the fifth grade president. Fifth grade, doing speeches. <laughs> Captain of the debate team. My teacher would say, Jerry, you kind of go back and forth too much. You will be an excellent salesman. I said, okay, well, why don't you give me some extra credit? <laughs> I always had a way with words. It wasn't for me to use it for taking advantage of people. But even in elementary school, I could see that preaching and pastoring was my destiny. Somebody, listen, you've always hated bullies. Just anytime somebody got up, you wouldn't even have to know the person. You just want to jump in. No, don't talk to her like that. She says she ain't doing this. Back up. It's just always there. Something in you was always fighting for justice. So maybe this is why you're so passionate about law. Because God needs more attorneys in the marketplace. God needs more spirit-filled politicians. I need you there. Because a lot of people, they won't come here. They won't come ever to hear me. They, you share the link. They won't ever listen. But if you're faithful at where you're supposed to be at and serving the kingdom agenda, then maybe they could see the light. We're all living epistles. The real question is, what version are you? <laughs> I'm that RIV version. The RIV, Ratchet International version. <laughs> I'm that God ain't through me yet. What version are you? God wants to get us to a place where I want you to desire your kingdom. Not just quote it, but desire kingdom. And in my kingdom... Greatness is serving. So God, would you help us to understand? Help us to understand it's not about likes. It's not about follows. It's not about our will. Help our will to die so that your will can be manifested in our life. In Jesus' precious name, anoint me to be the PA system of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who agrees that prayer, would you say amen? For a few more moments, I want to speak around this thought from this subject. Love like a king. Love like a king. Jesus models this to us. I didn't come to be served, but I came to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. They're married. Two kingdom keys that I want us to focus on on tonight is serving and love. Love like a king. Can I get somebody to say this and everybody watching, get your fingers ready, confession fingers. Can I get the whole house to say this? Father, Father. y'all got to say it like I'm convinced. Like I want to be really convinced that you mean like you praying this. Father, Father. create in me, me a, servant's a servant's heart. Help me love, Help me love. like a king. Like One more time. Father, Father. create in me Father. a servant's heart. Servant's Help me love like a king Pharaoh heart we lost our service the king heart I didn't come for services and, and I really have been stressing the last week when we were here I said listen God has a design for the home God has a blueprint for the home God has a model for the home because the home is the epicenter of a generation the home is the control center for a generation. For whatever happens in the majority of our houses will always be in concert with what happens in culture. And we talked about it and we shouted, but I want to finish this conversation. The health of the home. Remember, this represents the unmarried man, the unmarried woman, and the married couple. And Tanisha's going to come up in a minute. I want, just to, want us to see this. But I want us to get this. The health of the home is tied to this man's spiritual well-being before he ever shared a home with her. Okay, we only got a few yeses, all right? So let me say it again for the ladies. The health of the home 
is tied to the spiritual well-being of this woman before she's ever joined with him and they get in covenant. Okay? Does that make sense? So in this phase of his life, he has to have a cross encounter. Can I get somebody to say cross encounter? While I am by myself, by myself, an unmarried man, right here in this season of my life, I have to know God for myself. Come on up here, Miss Al- Flowers, with your fine self. <laughs> Give it up for my wife, y'all. Let me show you won't trip. You got it. Didn't want you to trip. That will end up on church and laugh or church milk. <laughs> and, and in this phase of my life, it is critical that I know the king for myself. Because if Ephesians 5 informs me, love your wife like Christ loved the church. If I don't know Christ, and if I don't go to nobody's church, nor am I a part of the church, there has been a love that God has created for his daughter to receive, the one who has been called for marriage. There is a love that God has created for her to receive that she will never get with me. Ever. This is why you could be in a relational context and constantly feel like something's missing. It is God. <laughs> You cannot listen. Marriage is a God-ordained institution. So for it to work, God has to be in the institution. So in this phase of my life, I have to know God for myself. Let me stand up and preach. Listen, y'all. This is not Jerry's words. I'm not up here telling you my opinions and my thoughts and my interpretation. I see clearly God's design was before Eve ever came along. It was just God and Adam. That's it. Notice God didn't create Adam and Eve at the same time. He created the man at the same time. And it was just God and Adam. He was intimate with God. So therefore, this lets me know every man must have a garden season. A season where it's just you and the Lord. You and the Lord. A garden season. God gave him stewardship responsibility. He gave him assignment. He gave him identity. And then God did something so awesome. He put him to sleep. He put Adam to sleep. Took out of his side closed it back together, and Adam woke up to a naked woman. I'm like, God is cold. (laughs) See, ladies, y'all don't think that's funny, but I'm just like, brothers, just imagine this woman is perfect. There ain't no wrinkles. There's no such thing as an imperfection. She has a heavenly body. You wake up from a nap from Eve on a, hey, boy. (laughs) I bet he was like, this is, whoa, man, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. (laughs) <laughs> but, but there's an intricate part that I think we miss. When God put Adam to sleep, after he performed surgery, he closed up his side. This is important because if God would not have closed his side, it would have created an infection. Hear me, y'all, hear me. There are wounds in men that only God could fix. Weed can't fix it. Club scenes can't fix it. Alcohol can't fix it. The gym can't fix it. Your music can't fix it. Weights can't fix it. Only God is the one that could close this wound. Now look at this. If I try to get with her with some open wounds in my life, she'll never be able to be my full wife. She will always be my full nurse. She'll never be able to be my wife. She'll just be my nurse. So as as a man, I'm bleeding on this woman, bleeding on that woman. See, men who are bleeding create bloody homes. I'm bleeding on my children. I'm bleeding on my brothers. And this isn't male bashing. Every single time I talk like this, oh, you're another male bashing. I'm like, you know what, God, why do we keep on thinking it's male bashing to remind people of the original kingdom agenda? And then I got this revelation. A daddy loves different than a mother. Okay? Daddy's love feels different than mommy's love. So if he grows up 
and daddy's not in the home, if he never gets daddy's love or uncle's love or grandpa's love or brother's love, every time he does get father's love, it feels like bashing. Because I grew up used to mama's breast, not used to daddy's love. Mama's breast just means I'm used to being nurtured. I've never been corrected. So as a little boy, I got nurtured, 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 nurtured. So now I'm a full grown man. And when you hear another man tell you how kings love, man, watch out, bro. You're judging me. No, it's just it's foreign to receive love from a brother when I've never known it. It's the same thing for my sisters. I promise this message is equal sex offensive. (laughs) <laughs> I promise, ladies, just wait. You amen and now, but you're not going to be in a minute. It's the same thing for sisters. If you grew up with your mother working hard and she told you to be independent and she told you to go get your degree and she told you to go to school and she told you to don't rely on nobody and she told you you don't need nobody and then you really do want somebody and then when you have somebody, you still act like I don't need nobody and you still act like I don't want nobody. So when he says something like, no, I don't, I don't want you getting gas tonight. What do you mean you don't want me to get gas tonight? I'm grown. What did I do before you? I was doing my own thing before you. I have my own bills. I'm starting to grab air. I pay my own bills. I know how to do my own thing. You're trying to tell me I can't get gas. Excuse me, you chauvinistic, narcissistic, manipulating me. I'm so over y'all trying to tell me. See, this is my problem. This is my problem. Now look, though. If daddy was in the home... And daddy told you, I don't want you to go get gas tonight. You would be used to what it feels like to be protected. Okay? All right? So now, since I grew up in a home with no protection, when I meet a protector, it feels like control. But if daddy was in the home, he would ask, who's that calling you? Daddy, we going to a football game. With who? Oh, it's me, just me and Jameson. I haven't met Jameson. Tell him, come over. I need to meet him. Well, Daddy, why you got to do all that? And even though you may not like him doing all that, it feels good to know a man cares for you. And so now I'm not looking for Daddy and Jameson because I got Daddy at home. All right? Are y'all seeing this? Once again, this is not Jerry's opinions. This is Bible. So I recognize something, Miss Flowers, as I was studying I said, hmm, there's this tactic. There's this tactic, and I want us to see this. Mark chapter 10, verse 9. It says, therefore, what God has joined together. Can I get somebody to say God? God. Now, y'all got to say it convinced. Somebody say God. God. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. A lot of us are joining stuff together. And then asking God to bless what he didn't sin. (laughs) Really? Oh, I'm about to mess y'all up. God is not obligated to keep together what he didn't sin. All right. See, nobody wants to talk to me. This is why I'm so intentional with trying to get us to understand how to do things the king's way. So you won't experience yourself in covenant, recognizing I don't think he knows the king, and I don't know the king either. There's some pain you don't have to feel, y'all. I'm telling you. We're all going to experience pain, but don't experience unnecessary pain. I, I just thought God would do this. God is not obligated to keep together what he didn't put together. And so there's this tactic that I'm recognizing. There's a strategy that I'm observing on how hell is causing for this woman to be discouraged. It's an attack, a military science, if you will. And it's not due from a devil. It's not due from a demon. It's not due from a stronghold, but he's causing for her to get tired. You know why she's so tired? Because he's so out of position. Okay, now look, look, look. Listen, single mothers doing the best that they can. I mean, you are killing it. No gas, I am blown away 
how strong some of my sisters are. I mean, you put your babies through school. You going back to school. You there for her gymnastics. You there for his football games. You bought the uniform. You're doing everything you know how to do. You're being intentional with your growth. You're being intentional with your evolution. You're even being intentional with your healing. Because you recognize the people who hurt you are not going to come back and heal you. There's no, bl- there's no healing in blaming. Blaming is not the fertilizer for your healing, but rather it is the umbilical cord for your bitterness. And you recognize that and you're doing the best you can. But if you be honest, you're tired. You're working hard and I understand you got the grace for it. God has given you the grace and he's given you the mercy to be it, but you're handling weights that you were never designed to carry. I know that this is not popular, but the kingdom agenda is for there to be kingdom man and for there to be kingdom woman in the home to raise kingdom children. And now I get it. When more of us are out of position, it causes for them to be tired. Tired. Listen, if we keep on addressing how to prepare her, but we never address a underprepared him. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I know this stuff don't sell. This is going to get a lot of thumbs down, and that's okay. If we keep on addressing a prepared her, but we're never addressing an underprepared him, we'll have a generation of women waiting for a man that doesn't exist. Because we're not having conversations about the kingdom agenda. We don't have biblically saturated sermons besides on Father's Day. We don't have biblically saturated services that are telling kingdom men, you are a warrior. You are a king. You are a chief. And God needs for you to be in the home. He called for you to be the head. He called for you to be a servant. He called for you to be the president of your domain. Nothing can get in this house without first getting through me. You can add some gangster to it. You can add a little hard to it because I'm a kingdom man and none's getting to my bride and none's getting to my family without first getting through me that is biblical manhood we don't have conversations like that there'll be a wife wanting to change to hit her husband's heart but it'll never happen because we don't hear sermons like this except on father's day except on father's day so now even my unmarried sisters you looking at the state of him and you like, God, is this all you got? <laughs> I know y'all ain't feeling me right now. Ladies, yours is coming, I promise, about two minutes. God, what you got in the back? <laughs> For real. You have another shipment coming through? Because you know how sisters are. I know I'm called for marriage. I know I'm called. I've seen it. No candidate, but I know I'm called. But, but when I'm looking at, at, at these brothers... God, is this all you got? (laughs) It's funny, but I'm serious. I'm serious. So we need to get the men back on fire for God. I'm just convinced we need men who fight to come back. But look, I'm not fighting with this. I know how to fight on this. I know how to fight right here. I'm talking about fight for purity, fight for my home, fight for my marriage, fight for my mind, fight for my integrity, fight for holiness. That's not old school, y'all. That's biblical. That's how you love like a king. So I need, I need my king in the earth. Because remember, God is always going to call Adam first. Because you are called to be the head. That's why I addressed you first. Now, for ladies, ladies, I want us to understand. I want us to look at this scripture. I want to show you the original lie of the enemy. Is this good so far? I promise I'm almost done. Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. It says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. You ain't going to die, Tanisha. For God knows if you eat this fruit, you're going to be like him. Knowing good and evil. Now, my wife is going to represent Eve. She is the baddest woman on the planet. It don't get any more finer than Eve. She is the only woman to ever walk this earth that was perfect. No flaw, 
Like her hair is on fleek, eyebrows on fleek, no wrinkle, her body is heavenly. But then what does the enemy do when a woman gets in a place where everything seems to be just right? As soon as you get your mind right, as soon as you get your emotions right, as soon as you get your sensitivity right, he always tries to tell you this lie. You're not enough. That's what he did with Eve. You won't surely die. God knows if you eat this, this fruit, you're going to be like him, knowing the good and the evil. What is he telling Eve? You're not enough. <laughs> you're not enough. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not, definitely not saved enough. You're not clean enough. You're not godly enough. You are not holy enough. You are not enough. And so what she ends up doing is climbing this invisible ladder to try to find this fruit. And she bites into the fruit. She bites into the relationship. She bites into the lesbianism. She bites into the cheap sex. She bites into the cheap thrills. She bites into being a stripper. She bites into all this stuff only to find out it does not cure me from my insecurity, but rather it separates me from the one that gives me security. So now you know what happens? This man right here could be on fire for God. He could be like me. On fire for God, love the Lord with his whole heart. I'm loving her like Christ loves the church. But since she feels she's never enough, everything I do is not enough. I can give flowers, that's not enough. I can clean, that's not enough. I can compliment, that's not enough. I can share images on social media, that's not enough. I can try to do everything. We could book a trip to Bahamas, that's not enough. I could have your mama come and move with us, that's not enough. That's not enough. And so now the man feels tired, and he feels like there ain't nothing I could do right. And then you have to know the devil always has a Delilah for Samson. You do that? You do that, oh, if I had a man like this, or oh, if I had, girl, you, girl, you lucky. That's how it start. It start with the girl, you so lucky. Ladies, notice that. You so lucky. You, you, you just, he do this. It's because I'm not used to that type of treatment. But there's nothing I can do. Nothing that I could do. Because her feeling not enough is not my fault. Her feeling not enough is because she believes a liar. Are y'all getting this? She believes a liar. Now watch this. When you believe lies, you'll keep on biting fruit that's been handed to you by snakes. Y'all see that? Y'all see how the ladies? Y'all see that? I told you, fellas, y'all could chill. It's ladies' turn. So now, you can always tell when a woman has eaten forbidden fruit because her mouth is venomous. Yes, it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. Come on. It's your turn. Kingdom vibes. It's your turn. Her mouth is venomous. Now watch this. Look. The mouth of a woman is an activator. Did y'all hear me? The mouth of a woman is an activator. What's the condition of your tongue, sis? Is it a grim reaper or is it a king producer? There's a king and there's a fool inside every man. Listen, there's a king and there's a fool inside every man. Which one do you speak fluent in? Kingdom or foolish? Foolish. So you talk to him out of venom. Let me give you Bible. See, you got quiet. I like this. I promise you we were around it. Let, let, let's, let's give you Bible. Let's go ahead and go to these familiar passages of Scripture and then we're going to be done. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9. It says, better to live... On a corner. Let me go way over here, Tanisha. Somebody say, I knew that was coming. You show right. <laughs> it's better to live on a corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Now, look, the quarrelsome state is in herself. She doesn't even like herself because she herself is not enough. She doesn't even view herself pretty. I'm like, good Lord. He says it's better to be on the roof. I'm like, what if it's winter? What if like last week, Hurricane Nicholas is coming through? It's better for you to be blowing, bruh. <laughs> it's better for you to be blowing than for you to be in the house with her venomous mouth. This is Bible, y'all. Verse 19, same verse. It says, it's better to live in a desert. 
you know, deserts got cactus and sand and rattlesnakes and you know, all types of stuff. It's better for you to be out there getting sunburnt, bro. It's better for you to be getting sunburnt and freezing at night than to you to be dealing with a quarrelsome and a nagging wife. Now, I, I want to give you more Bible. All right, look. Um, most of us don't know this, but I studied this, and this really blessed me. When, when Satan was about to go tempt Job, first he had this conversation with God. He had this conversation with God, and then he told, man, listen, if, if you let me touch him, he going to curse you to your face. Now, I want us to look at this. Um, Job chapter 2, verse 3, um, it says, Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright. I pray God never does this with me. I'm just being real. A man who fears God and shuns evil, and he still maintains his, his integrity. Though enticed me against him to ruin without any reason. And look at this. Uh, verse 4, skin for skin, Satan replied, a man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bone, and he will surely curse you to your face. Okay? Everybody say, curse you to your face. So Satan goes and afflicts Job. Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, his who? His who? Why y'all talking soft now? Y'all are all, yes, preach. His who? His wife. Somebody said, I can't see that word. Okay, his wife. His wife said to him, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. I want to know, how did she know to say the exact same statement that Satan told God that Job would say after I get afflicted? Could it be because the enemy knows how I get to him is by talking to you. I'm staying in your ear, and I'm going to tell you stuff that you need to tell him. Tell him he's sorry. Tell him he's no good. Tell him he's trifling, good for nothing type of brother. <laughs> tell him. Tell him he's so sorry. Tell him you don't need no man. Tell him this is why you don't even put it down in the bedroom anyway. Tell him stuff to hurt his ego. Tell him. And when she can't discern when a snake is talking to her, she tells him all those things that he's been wrestling with already. Because remember, it always happens in the spirit before the natural. So now her mouth is used to assassinate things in him that he was trying to build. But we want a kingdom home. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Somebody say, get wisdom. And all you're getting, get understanding. One point. One point. Get under the principles. That's it. Get under the principles. And all thy getting, get understanding. Come in, Miss Flowers. So, so when we give teachings like this about kingdom, the goal, pop yours open. Why well, I got the feminine one? You get the feminine one. <laughs> it's raggedy too. The goal is for me to get under a principle. For you to get understanding, there must be something you stand under. Okay? So now lift yours up. So while we're meeting, let's meet. I stand under purity. Is that something you understand? I stand under holiness. Is that something you understand? I stand under righteousness. Is that something you understand? I stand under, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Is that what you understand? I stand under honesty. Is that something you understand? So now if we understand the same thing, come on over here. Come on. Come on. I have my arm around your purpose. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Now we can stand under the principles of the king together. Does this make sense? So a lot of people want to get here. Put it down. But there's nothing they're standing under. 
So we're getting wet by everything the world rains on us. Every storm, every trial, we're getting soaked because we're not standing on nothing. But when we stand on the God's will, I'm not saying that we won't get wet, but I am saying God got us covered. Does this make sense? God has us covered because we're standing under a principle. So Father God, in this moment, we recognize that you have a design and you have a blueprint for the home. For that brother to know you to have a garden season. Before she ever takes interest in him, recognize his garden. Because unmowed gardens give room for snakes. God, help us to redeem the original kingdom agenda. Because you told us in your word, you desire godly offspring. And that requires godly kingdom parents and kingdom covenants. We love you so much of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.